Whew. Going to start some wars with this one. We're on to sharpening stones. Which one is best? Which one is going to suit your needs the best? Yeah, let's start some debates. Welcome to Tool Duel. Right, as always on the subject of sharpening, disclaimer before I start, these are all my own opinions. These are things that I've seen over the years at Axminster, over the years at Rykert Wood. Just stuff that I've noticed, I'm sharing my opinions on it, I'm not trying to change anyone else's. However, if you are uneducated on any of this, this may help. So, on the menu today we have water stones. These are either natural or more commonly synthetic. They come in a variety of grits. They come in, well, this one's a combination stone, for example. So we've got 1,000, we've got 6,000 on this side. A bit more bang for your buck. In the middle here, we have got Scary Sharp, which is something that Matthew Platt from Workshop Heaven endorses and lots of other makers. We actually use this quite a lot at Rikerwood because Workshop Heaven helped us out a lot there. They sponsored us with a lot of equipment. Essentially what this is, is very, very fine sandpaper attached to float glass. And it's important you use float glass because float glass is as flat as the curvature of the earth. More on that later. Finally, or sorry, second to last, we have diamond stones. These are metal plates with diamonds bonded to the top of them. And finally, we have strops, which is what you would have seen quite often, most likely. So let's go through them all, starting with water stones. Right, so if you've ever been in your granddad's garage, chances are he has got a sharpening stone in a box. And that is actually most likely an oil stone. Now that was more popular back in the old fashioned days, should we say. Water stones have in most cases superseded these. The reason is they have a few advantages over an oil stone, however they do have a few disadvantages as well obviously. The main advantages that water stones have over oil stones is that they cut a lot quicker. Oil stones, they're not very quick at removing waste. The oil kind of clogs all the metal shavings into the stone and stops it from cutting efficiently. And that leads on to the second disadvantage oil stones have over water stones in that they are messy. If, for example, I was sharpening my tools in an oil stone, got my hands all covered in oil, and then wiped my hand across this nice pristine bit of work that I was working on, that would get a lovely oily patch in it that not only would be filled with oil, but with metal shavings as well, and just, just make an absolute shambles of your work, which wouldn't be ideal. Water stones, all you need on them, a little bit of water. You need to soak them a little bit beforehand, but that is all you need. And obviously you can get water anywhere you want, and it's all fine. It just wipes straight off. Metal shavings won't get embedded in it or dried on, so that's a nice advantage with water stones. The disadvantage they have is that they wear a lot quicker than oil stones. This is the trade-off for water stones cutting quicker than oil stones because they're constantly exposing new grit. So with water stones, you need a way of keeping them flat. So underneath here, this again is a bit of float glass. And what you would do is put a bit of wet and dry on there, get your stone, and after each use, you would just rub it back and forth and get that perfectly flat. Another way of doing this, which is slightly less messy, is to get yourself a diamond plate. This one is from DMT and it is made specifically for flattening abrasive stones. Do not use this for sharpening your tools because the bonding isn't quite the same as another diamond stone. So this actually has diamonds on it, but essentially all you would do is rub your stone on it like that. You need to do this with water, but I haven't got a water source here. Rub that on it and that gets your stones perfectly flat. So yeah, that's the main premise behind water stones. They cut quickly and they come in a variety of grits. Like I said before, this one here is a 1000 grit and a 6000 grit in the same stone. This is actually my favorite one of the two because you, know, you get the most for your money and you can get a really, really sharp edge on this 6000 grit, which is what I like. This one here is a 10,000. I go to it occasionally, but I don't find I need it that often, to be honest. 
So yeah, whether you go for oil stones or water stones, just bear in mind that you need a way of keeping them flat. So either float glass or a specific diamond plate for it. If you watched my previous video on honing guides, you would know that I dislike sharpening. So with oil stones being slower at cutting material, that means that sharpening is going to take longer and I don't want to be doing that. So I'll go for the quick cutting stone, quick flat and before each use, bosh, ready to go. So on to the next one. Okay, so this is the scary sharp system. Now, like I said, this is just very fine sandpaper, or in this case, it's very fine sandpaper. You can get lots of other grits stuck to float glass. Now, float glass is important because it is perfectly flat. I can't remember exactly how they make it, but this glass is hardened on a perfectly flat surface and is leveled out by gravity. So that is as flat as the curvature of the earth or pull of gravity if you want to get scientific but but that's a very important point the reason for this is because it keeps your sharpening surface perfectly flat like I said with oil stones and water stones they start to get dishes over time as you start using them and you need to flatten them this does not dish over time because it's stuck to a hard surface below now like I said in the introduction I used this for many years at Rikertwood because Workshop Heaven sponsored us with loads of it and there's no denying it's really great in a communal workshop if we were all using water stones, having to rely on the other person flattening it and keeping them flat beforehand, it's just one of those things that you just can't keep on top of. With this, it's stuck to a flat substrate and it's ready to go. You just need a little bit of water on it again. You don't need to soak this obviously, so a bit of water and that is ready to go. The disadvantage I found with Scary Sharp, especially in a communal workshop, was when you're using narrower chisels, especially an eighth of an inch, this is a quarter of an inch, so it shouldn't be too bad, but when you push forward, it can sometimes catch in the sandpaper and rip it up, basically. But otherwise, it's really great stuff. If you're careful on it, and especially if you work on the backstroke most of the time, which is actually how you're recommended to use it, you can get a really sharp edge on this. It comes in full-size sheets like this, which you just cut to size, but you will need to replace them over time, and you haven't got a permanent solution to your sharpening unless you keep replacing it obviously. So yeah, I really like this stuff, the fact it stays perfectly flat and also the grits that you can get for it are, there's a massive spectrum of them. You can go down to the stupidest grits with this stuff, which I'm not even sure it starts doing anything to the metal by that point, but yeah, there's a lot of versatility in terms of grits. Just bear in mind that it's not a permanent solution. You do need to replace the sandpaper every now and then. So let's go on to diamond stones now. Like I said, the advantage with the scary sharp stuff back there is that it stays perfectly flat. And that is another advantage with diamond stones. It is diamonds bonded to a metal surface. It stays flat over a very long time. And I really rate these. Now these come in different qualities, should we say. So we've got two budget ones here. Now these ones here are from Axminster and we use these for a lot of our general purpose sharpening. Got a 400 grit here and a 1000 grit. And the budget ones are all right to get started. Although I say that they're diamond bonded to a flat surface, budget ones do sometimes have a little bit of undulation on them, which isn't too much of an issue when you're sharpening the bevel on a chisel or plane blade. But when you're flattening the back, however, you want this to be perfectly flat. So these are all right if you're sharpening occasionally, you're not too worried about your edges. You just want a chisel that's gonna cut wood basically. So, that's a good starting point for anyone who doesn't have anything and you want a low maintenance solution to your sharpening meats. If however you are craving a slightly better edge, you can get these sort of moderately priced ones. Unlike these two with a 400 grit and a 1000 in separate stones, this is 400 that side, 1000 that side. So you get two grits in one stone, which is always nice. And I found this one to be pretty good. It's flat enough there's been tiny undulations in it but really not enough to worry about and i haven't found an issue with it and yeah i quite like that stone for a moderately priced one it's good and finally you can go on to the premium ones now this is by a brand called dmt who are our market leaders in the diamond sharpening systems this is one of their smaller plates we use this at work for our general purpose things but when you go for a premium brand you will get a perfectly flat stone. And not only that, but these premium ones have a lot more diamonds on them and therefore cut a lot quicker to a cheaper one of the equivalent grit. So if you want one that is perfectly flat, is going to cut very quickly, go for a premium one. 
Like I say, this is the smaller one from DMT. However, they do ones that are sort of this size and a little bit bigger. They come in various grits. So I really like diamond stones for how flat they stay and for how quickly they cut. But just bear in mind that there is a difference if you're going to go up between the cheaper ones and the more premium ones. So for my kind of work where it's fine woodworking and things, I would definitely say go for either a moderate or a premium one. However, if you're just doing it for general home use or site use, such as installing hinges, these two would be fine for you. And if you can stretch to it, that would be even better. That would probably be a little bit overkill. So finally, let's go on to strops. Okay. So I get quite a few people come into store and they think that they can just get away with buying a strop and use that for all of their sharpening needs. Just when the chisel gets blunt, rub it back a few times, rub it there a few times, rub it back a few times. You know, they do the old hand thing as well, which scares the bejesus out of me. But yeah, a strop isn't best used as a primary means of sharpening. Instead, it's best for removing the burr and polishing the edge after you have used all these other stones here. So on a strop you can put a variety of grits and that usually comes in a paste. This one here is sort of a liquidy one like that and that can just sort of, you can get your finger in there and wipe it on. And that is a fine one. I've got a super fine here as well which I use on the opposite side. And yeah, that really takes your tools to the next level after using sharpening stones, so such as water stones and diamond stones for example. I would definitely recommend getting one of these for your final polishing stage after using the stones over here. So, which is better? Well, you're gonna hate me for saying it, but there isn't really a best one to be honest. What you should be doing is looking at your workflow and matching your equipment to suit that. So for example, if you sharpen freehand, firstly don't, just get yourself a honing guide. But, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Um, if you sharpen freehand, a water stone is going to be a little bit dodgy for you. The reason is, like I said before, they're very soft. Now, a little story. I did a exhibition with Axminster last year at a boatyard down in Portsmouth. And at that boatyard, there was a lot of people using oil stones. Now, like I said before, oil stones cut slower, but they are very hard. Now, one of the tutors from the skill center was doing a demonstration on sharpening, and he was using water stones for it. And what happened is one of the people from the boatyard came out Obviously, with the tutor sharing his thoughts on sharpening, that provoked an argument, as it always does in sharpening. And he said, no, your method of sharpening is wrong. I'm going to show you how you properly do it. He got his chisel, and because he was used to using oil stones, which are harder, he went in there freehand with a six mil chisel and dug straight into the water stone. He thought that water stone was going to be as hard as the oil stone and just glide across the top. He took a massive chunk out of it. So if you sharpen freehand, just watch out if you're going to buy water stones, you're going to have to be sharpening on the back stroke. Do not think that you can do it on the push stroke because you will just dig to China in that thing. This is also a similar case for scary sharp. If you're sharpening freehand, you're just going to start digging into that once you start doing push strokes, you're gonna to have to rely on back strokes on that as well. Diamond stones, they're hard enough, you can sharpen freehand on those. So if you're a beginner and you just want safe and consistent results when you're sharpening, I usually throw people to diamond stones when they come into store just because they stay perfectly flat and it's one less thing to worry about. Water stones and oil stones, they dish over time and you can really easily ruin the back of your chisels if you start putting a massive curve on them. Now over time, you might find that you want a sharper edge. So again, this rider one goes to a thousand grit and then you can take the strop to that and that takes it to uh, probably about 4,000 maybe. But you might want to take that a step further. DMT. The premium diamond stone company do diamond stones that go up to 8,000 grit, if I remember correctly. However, what I've found when diamond stones start going too high in the grits, they clog very quickly. In fact, even with this 1,200 grit stone, this has started to clog up. And as a result, when you're flattening the back of your planes and chisels, they start aquaplaning over the top of it and it stops cutting. And I've seen that mimicked in a lot of reviews before. So that is one problem with diamond stones. This is also a similar case with scary sharp, just starts aquaplaning over the top when you go to too high of a grit. So this is where you're going to start needing to look into water stones again, because like I said before, as you work them in, they keep exposing new grit and they keep removing the swarf. So that is where water stones come into their own and they're endorsed by a lot of reputable people such as Chris Wars and David Charlesworth, for example. If you're a intermediate sharpener, perhaps you've been using diamond stones for the past few years, perhaps you've been using your granddad's oil stone and you know you need to keep it flat, 
I cannot recommend a 1000 and 6000 grit waterstone anymore. This thing polishes to such a nice finish with the 6000 grit, especially when I then take it to my strop with the superfine paste. I find that's a really nice edge on there. Just bear in mind if you do go down the waterstone route, it can be quite messy and it takes up quite a bit of room, obviously. Now the mess isn't too much of an issue if it gets on your work, like I said before, because it's just water wiped straight off. If you're working with oil stones, oil is just gonna ruin your work. So definitely have a designated sharpening station if you're working with oil. Preferably have a sharpening station if you're working with water stones. So the setup I used over the years was this diamond stone from Axminster, 400 and 1000 grit combination then with a strop and I got really good results from that really liked it very consistent and it was just good to be working with sharp tools for once then I started craving that little bit more so I went up to the 1000 6000 grit waterstone and with that I purchased the DMT flattening plate the reason for this is because I was at Riketwood I didn't have a designated sharpening station to put my float glass and to put all my flattening sandpaper on I needed something portable that I could take to the sink with me. So that flattening plate, diamond stone, took it under the water, rubbed it together, sorted nice and flat. And then beyond that 6,000 grit, I take it to my strop and put the super fine paste on it just to get rid of the remaining burr. And that is all I really need. I own this 10,000 grit water stone. The rest of them are all props from Axminster and things, but I own this 10,000 grit water stone. Don't find I need it, to be honest. So overall, if you're starting with absolutely nothing, I would recommend a combination diamond stone of moderate quality just to get you started and also a strop with some paste on it that will get you a really sharp edge you can shave arm hair with that so it's good to get you started if you want a little bit more 1000 and 6000 grit stone and work out for yourself which is going to be best for you in terms of flattening either float glass or granite for that matter with sandpaper on it or a designated flattening plate just bear in mind these are expensive so have a look hopefully you found that useful again chuck any comments arguments below let's have a fight about sharpening um god that was the most backhanded ending ever um yeah see you in the next video